Hi, everybody. This is Michelle Walling from N5D Network. This is episode 17, and the name of this is Do I Have to Be Thin to Ascend? And you may say, well, that's just an odd name. But it's really in response to a comment that I got on a video. <clears throat> As you know, Greg and I just uh, returned from the N5D Superpower Activation conference and we've been putting every one of our videos up for free in service to humanity to share the information. And one of the comments that I received was this. Some of the information was correct, but these two individuals are far from ascension as nobody who lets themselves get that overweight and out of shape could possibly be connecting to anything but Burger King and McDonald's. So I find that um, I find that actually a little comical, but in a way, I find it you know judgmental and egotistical, meaning that only the ego would uh, say something like that. Definitely not coming from the heart. So, how do you deal with comments like that? Well, I take it as a good opportunity to actually share my experience with my life and with my past lives and how I got to be the size I am and why I'm happy with the way I am and why um, there's other people that may be um, the size that they are and whether it's extra skinny or extra large it doesn't matter it's what's inside that matters <clears throat> and I think most of you know that but I thought you might be interested in hearing some of my life story so there are many different um, human extraterrestrial uh, mixtures uh, on this planet. Um, most of the, of the human templates on this planet have at least 12 extraterrestrial DNA um, additions to them. Some have tweaks. They have families of different, uh, more of this gene or more of that gene. Or um, some, some people on the planet are hybrids. They have um, their mother and their father conceived, and then the then they were abducted and taken up into a spaceship and added a third extraterrestrial gene into the mix. <laughs> it's true, um, and so thus you have hybrid children who are uh, more like extraterrestrials than humans of uh, than the average human. Let's say <clears throat> so. Um. So we all have our, our extraterrestrial lineage, as well as any kind of tweaks that may have been made over the lineage uh, as far as inserting extraterrestrial DNA of different families, different races. And then we all have our personal uh, bloodline heritage here from this body that we in incarnated into. Now, <clears throat> we made a contract with the collective that at this time in this lifetime, the majority of us would be meat eaters, meaning that we would succumb to the system that was set up to enslave us, dominate, control us, and poison us, <laughs> which does include meat. And, you know, as most people know, a lot of the meat that is killed, um, the animals aren't treated right, and they have consciousness and they have feelings, and a lot of them are slaughtered in unsavory conditions, which causes emotional information to be stored into the meat when they die. But that's not really what this video is about. <clears throat> As we begin to learn, we make choices and we begin to turn away from these kinds of uh, meats that you may find, you know, in your supermarket. And then we move more towards organic. Okay. So if we're going to eat meat at all, we make sure that it's organic. So we know that that's not it, right? That's not the reason why some of us are a little bit more uh, ha carry a little bit more weight than others. Uh, I think it does have to do with um, how active you are, and of course your your lifestyle and um, what you what you eat. <clears throat> a lot of people say you are what you eat, and that's a real that's a truthful uh, statement in a way, but it's also very cruel because I'm not a cow. If I eat cow, uh, I'm not a pig, but I don't eat pig anymore. So, <laughs> really, what I wanted to cover though. <clears throat> is that we've been inundated with fast food in this reality. And um, fast food was definitely a um, thing that I grew up with my whole life. It wasn't uh, something that I had much choice over because of the way that I was raised. Um, we'll start with um, uh, 
going back a little bit, I woke up at the age of 40, as most of you know, which was only um, five and a half years ago. And before that, I had absolutely no idea whatsoever what they were doing to our food. Truly didn't. Um, I had, um, when I was married at my second marriage, I had a lot of money at the time and I didn't cook. So we found ourselves eating out uh, most of the time or I would go to uh, a place called Central Market and buy uh, meals, pre-prepared meals, bring them home, warm them up. And that was good. Um, before that, my first marriage, I was uh, a mother and um, I worked and I came home and did all of the household chores, including cooking, which I don't do. So as you can imagine, um, it was very convenient for me to stop by McDonald's um, or order a pizza, um, Taco Bell at the time before my body began rejecting these things. Um, that was part of my lifestyle. And uh, that started, uh, let's go back to college. When I was in college, um, I didn't have any money. I lived off a of very cheap fast food, um, cheapest I could get. Anything that I could put in my mouth that would uh, fill my stomach up, I ate. I also lived on potatoes. Potatoes was a very big staple for me. Um, and uh, weenies, weenies and cheese when I was in college and I didn't have a lot of money. So um, these are things out of necessity. I was very grateful to have something to eat, you know. Um, but really, I think it all started in this lifetime as far as not eating uh, ideally. Uh, when, my, um, when I was born and um, my parents divorced when I was seven and <clears throat> my dad uh, was the caretaker. Now, he, he made uh, chicken fried steak was his homemade specialty with uh, homemade gravy, mashed potatoes. He was really good at that. So probably once a week, maybe once every two weeks, that's what we would have if we didn't have fast food. There's a, um, a devilish place called Whataburger in Texas that has really good hamburgers and fries that we would eat. And we ate some McDonald's. Um, I never did like Burger King, just for the record. <laughs> um, but things like, you know, we didn't eat well. We didn't eat like right. We ate well, but we didn't eat right. Um, so I learned that. That was normal for me. And and I didn't really have a weight problem most of my life. Um, so going through um, when my dad and my, when my parents separated at seven and my dad cooked, he used to make things like spaghetti and meat with Colby cheese and homemade fries, homemade, you know, fried potatoes and Crisco oil and things like that. Yeah, we're talking my dad was a meat and potatoes kind of guy. Then his father, my grandfather, was a um, very generous man. And when he had extra money, um, he saved up for every weekend. He tried to bring the family together for, for community family gathering. And he would invite all of their friends, all of their business associates together with all the family. There could be 40 people you know, at the house and he would um, sit outside all day starting early in the morning and fire up his smoker and put half a cow on there with a whole bunch of sausage, make all kinds of mashed potatoes and things like that. And my great, my great grandparents would make pies and uh, all kinds of varieties of pies. We had a smorgasbord. We had more than we could ever eat. And when we didn't do that and we got together, we'd go out to eat Mexican food or something like that. That was a tradition in our family. So um, that's the way I grew up, and um, I didn't know anything about um, how that I was the, how that was affecting me until I woke up to you know out of the fog, out of the programming that that's not uh, very good for you. Now I didn't really struggle with the weight most of my life until I got pregnant, <clears throat> and that was a twofold thing. The first was I knew that I was only going to be pregnant once. I knew that I was only going to have one child. And somewhere deep down inside, I think I knew that this was going to be my last lifetime here because kind of a selfish type thing, I decided that I was going to eat whatever my body craved and whatever my body craved out, I ate. Um, I would eat for one and a half, maybe two, I gained, you know, uh, probably 20 pounds over the normal, which isn't too bad. Uh, but I did, I did get that weight off and I always had a metabolism problem and that, um, that probably stems from a thyroid problem, and that probably stems from my family lineage. 
<clears throat> I'm not going to own this because I'm trying to change this. But my grandfather was over six foot four and over 350 pounds. My father was kind of a tall man, but my uncle, um, especially, but he's still alive. My uncle's about six foot two, six foot three. He's probably close to 280, maybe even 300, depending. It fluctuates back and forth. So, you know, you can probably eat just as much as um, you did one year as the last year. But as you get older and your metabolism breaks down and your genomes are breaking down, it makes it harder for you to lose the weight. And you have to exercise just a little bit more. Now, when I was born, I was born with a, pro a knee problem. My knees um, would not they were floating. And when I was a baby, I couldn't crawl on my knees. I scooted on my butt until I learned how to walk. And my parents just thought it was funny. You know what? What's wrong with it? She went, my baby doesn't crawl. <laughs> That's okay. But I realized that I had, had a problem. And I started um, having knee uh, injuries in uh, doing sports in high school where my kneecap would slip out of the socket. They call it some, something like a subluxed patella. Now that is more painful than having a baby. <laughs> it was horrifying. And it wasn't until I got insurance when I was in my probably 30s that I had um, surgery. And one of my knees had to be completely opened up and screwed together, stapled back together, lots of physical therapy, lots of horrible recovery. And the other one was done orthoscopically. Now, um, it seems that since that time I went through a divorce and I was a single mom and I didn't have a lot of time, didn't make a lot of time to, for myself to, or to exercise. And then in between my first marriage and my second marriage, when I got married the second time, I had time to exercise. Um, uh, but, and I did, because if I didn't, then I would have gotten probably a lot bigger than I did then because I had the money to buy whatever I wanted any time to eat. And then we traveled a lot. And like I said, I didn't cook, so we ate out. But after my awakening, I made, you know, a really big lifestyle change as far as um, sodas, alcohol, sugar, you know, um, inorganic foods, processed foods. So I made some huge changes. So it's not like I don't sit around and, and eat processed foods or overeat. Um, my issue is the lack of um moving around. And it does have to do with uh, my knees, my back, my physical problems that I have now that I believe that I'm working on uh, and healing from probably past lives. I mean, it's really obvious when you're born with a knee thing, it's got to be from past lives. So a contract that I made that, I'm work that I've revocated, but really mainly working 10 to 12 hours a day sitting in front of a computer is um, really doesn't leave a lot of time for um, yourself. And I, and, um, so I'm really working on trying to make more time for myself, but the bottom line is, is that, um, I love my body and I love the way I am just the way I am. And, um, it will be nice to, um, to get some more exercise, especially when it warms up and I can get back in the pool because the pool has less effect and less, um, uh, stress on my joints. <clears throat> I might have a little bit of a hip issue that comes and goes, but mostly my knees um, and my back. And so when you carry um, a, a little extra weight, it's stressful on everything. So you're kind of in a catch-22, and I do realize that. <clears throat> but I'm perfectly fine with who I am and acknowledging that this is a vehicle, and I'm trying to do the very best I can in the situation that I'm in with my whole life and with my uh, family's uh, DNA. I'm very surprised that um, it hasn't gotten way worse, you know, <laughs> than... Um, then it could have if I just simply wouldn't exercise at all, or if I would simply just eat whatever I wanted, or if I was eating GMOs, what happens with GMOs is that your body knows it's toxic. And, um, also with the, uh, the pesticides and, uh, chemtrails that are in the, you know, on, that fall on the food and are in the soil, but your body puts forth fat, fat cells to protect you from that. So, you know, there's so many factors involved in, you know, being part of this matrix that is very um, uncompassionate to judge someone else for what they're going through. And that would be also, you know, your past lifetimes because everything's happening at the same time. 
Well, I think that my second husband was probably a king at one time, and he had everything he could ever want, and that's how we used to live. And of course, that didn't make me happy. But um, I'm sure that I also had, um, uh, so I was with him when he was a king. Um, I wasn't the queen. <laughs> no, far from it. But um, I also had many lifetimes, I know, where I starved to death. And so I always, um, you know, want to, I am always find myself planning my next meal. And, and, you know, even if it's a really good meal, I just want to make sure that I have my organic food, that I have everything lined up, and that... Um, I also have an um, issue with blood sugar to where if I start getting um, my blood sugar gets low, if I don't eat, I get a little grumpy. So, of course, these are all things that can be fixed. And I just kind of live with it right now. And But what I, what I did really, really want to talk about is this perfection of your DNA and ascension. And that has nothing to do with your... Um, Ascension is not going to happen because you're skinny. You're not just going to ascend and float up like a balloon. It could happen um, um, to skinny people, but not because of the way your physical body is. And um, I carry, my soul is a high vibrational soul. And I came into this body as a child with a different vibration than most other kids. And they didn't want to play with me. They didn't choose me to play in different games and things like that. And I just felt like an outsider. And that's because I carried a different vibration. And um, my body and my soul vibrate to two different levels. And eventually, you know, what you really want to do is you do want to try to vibrate your physical body at, um, it's a holistic view. You want to vibrate your physical body at a rate that can meet your soul's vibration. And also work with, it works with your body to be able to bring in more of your soul essence. So one of the things that I do is I bring in more of my soul's essence when I'm uh, grounding to the planet. And I ground in that cosmic energy to the planet. And that's one of the exercises I do to try to help humanity um, ascend, wake up and ascend. So sometimes I feel like I need to have a bigger base, so to speak to hold a lot of that light. And I know that may sound a little weird, but, um, and it's not really an excuse. It's just a thought because I have no excuses. All I have is, you know, observations as to, as to why this vehicle, um, is like, it's like it is. It's, it's me. It's who I am, um, in a physical manifestation. Um, so I think, um, as we do work more on ourselves and connect and bring in more light. We're going. That light is going to uh, keep shining on our DNA and lighting up the codons. And um, I think one time that I really stopped caring about worrying about dieting and more focusing on my inner self and my soul was in 2012, when I truly thought we had a chance at making a shift, and that would mean that we could have our DNA activated and that we would, uh, be, um, be able to create whatever physicality that we wanted, which could mean we could grow our hair long. We could grow it short. We could have it green. We could have it blue. You know, we could change our eye color. We do have to work with the template involved in our DNA in this DNA body, or we could even bring in a template from another lifetime happening at the same time. So that's very interesting, but you have to Keep in mind, you know, the compassion for other people. If they're used to seeing you a certain way, it's really going to freak them out. If you're at least not you, even if you look 25 when you're actually 45, at least it's still you, right? So, and when that didn't happen, I knew that there was something kind of wrong. I mean, I really have always said that I felt like, I didn't feel like 2012 was going to be the end or the end of the world or any major thing, but I did think it was going to spark sooner than now, this um, DNA activation, because I know that's what I'm here for. So secretly, I have to say that I've never really worried about my body that much, the size of my body and what other people think about me, because I know that one day I will either leave this body and will be free of it and go on back home to where I came from, or I will transform this body and create whatever body I'd like. So it's just a body. It's just a vehicle. So it's very silly to um, look at other people and say um, he or she is not going to ascend because of the way they look. And that includes um, skin color and race and all kinds of things, male or female, you know, anything. 
And also, I wanted to say that food actually serves me. Um, and it does that because like sometimes when I'm on my radio show, I get very high vibrational. And when I'm done, I literally feel uncomfortable because I am vibrating so high and I need to eat something to ground or I need to ground. And I could go out and hug a tree and that would just make me, you know, even more. <laughs> I could probably pop out of my body. My job is to be in the body grounded. So I always eat something little after a show. I've always found that potatoes, um, starchy things like um, <clears throat> uh, pasta and bread have grounded me. And so it's like a double-edged sword, you know, because my soul is vibrating high and um, to stay in the body, I need to ground. And I don't know how or why that works, but it, it's always made me feel very comfortable. One of the best diets I ever did was that Atkins diet where you only eat um, uh, meats and vegetables. You don't eat any carbs or sugar or anything like that. So, uh, I mean, that's a horrible diet. I was eating, when I say best, I mean, that's when I lost the most weight, gained it all back. But I was eating meats and bacon and eggs and cheese and things like that. And that's not the way to live either. So, um, yeah, so um, emotional eating. I am um, also... And very, um, you know, have used food very many times um, under a lot of stress to just calm myself down. And it does something with the brain and it sends forth some kind of calming aspect for me. So, um, you know, when it comes to being a breatharian, <laughs> not having any food or having um, a love affair with food and being able to use it to calm myself and to do my job here, I have to say I would choose food over being a breatharian. Now, as far as a vegetarian, yes, eventually, um, if it's going to take a while to get to this point where we um, ascend, um, I probably, I've already cut down on meat. I uh, very rarely eat organic beef, uh, but I do eat chicken, and uh, I only eat organic chicken. And every now and then, go out to a restaurant. Um, it's all in moderation for me. Um, you know, the restaurant's not going to have anything organic. Um, I had some lobster the other night, Wednesday night. And it did make me feel pretty heavy, but it did ground me. And it's all part of this experience for me. Um, secretly, I also have had many thoughts once I woke up that if this is my last lifetime here, I'm not going to sit and worry about um, not eating, you know, this or that, except for ob the obvious things like the poisons. But um, more of blessing my food, raising its vibration, allowing myself to have a relationship with food and loving the food. And allowing it to do what I need to be able to get by to do my job. Because I'm holding a lot of energy. So that's just where I'm at. And that's kind of like um, you can see from past lives. You can see from my current life. You can see from emotional. I had a lot of emotional issues. Thank goodness I had uh, food to make me feel better. Because, <laughs> um, you know, when you're going through these things before you're awakened, it's, it can be very horrible, you know? Um, and if you don't have anybody to share experiences with or to help you move through those things, you got to use what you got, right? So, but I never really had, um, you know, a really, um, lifelong issue. Uh, I would say that I'm pretty lucky so far that I don't weigh more than I do, but if I did, it wouldn't matter because I know what's coming. And I know that's not going to keep me from ascending because I know who I am. And I know that I've done my inner work. So um, let's see what else I wanted to say. Um, so the person that made this comment surely didn't listen to the video because it did talk about what's more important, what's most important right now is being in your heart and um, being compassionate and loving. And many people have said that as long as you're... Um, a loving person and you're compassionate and you're more than 51% in service to others rather than being service to self, that those people are going to make it, whether they're spiritually awakened or not, whether they're religious or not, their um, vibration does not have a, um, uh, any boundaries, you know, vibration is what it is. You can't fake vibration. You can't, um, you can't say that you're, doing everything by the book perfectly and judging other people. So um, that's not doing it by the book and perfectly. No one in their heart would really do that to someone else. So how do you deal with it? Well, 
you can do what I did. You can talk it out. You can uh, let it flow through you. You can share your experience with other people. Uh, if there's one person out there thinking that I go and eat at McDonald's and Burger King every day and that I'm not going to ascend, well, I certainly need to um, talk to that person and perhaps other people that might have that judgmental um, uh, view of things. But it's not that they're they're um, it's not that their thinking is wrong. <clears throat> it's just that it's not on the same level of understanding as mine, and I don't understand why people who are in their heart. Well, I just know that people that are in their heart wouldn't do that. But um, interestingly enough, um, this person, uh, their last name had uh, Aryan, A-R-Y-A-N. And that made me think, because it made me think of the Nazi Hit Hitler, Nazi regime, where they were trying to kill everyone that didn't have the perfect look. Uh, of course, they weren't fat then because they didn't have any food <laughs> at all. But we're talking blonde hair, blue eye, white skin. So it kind of makes me wonder <clears throat> if that's just a program carried over from when they their past lives. So, you know, I judge, I judge not because they don't know what they're saying or doing, but it's time to wake up. It's time to be, um, to be the God source that we are. And that means being responsible for your own actions and being aware of what you're saying and doing to other people, because when you, whatever you put out comes back to you. So, um, Hmm. I guess that's really, there's probably more I wanted to say, but I just want to give everyone hope that no matter what you look like, um, no matter if you can't afford a organic food, um, as long as you're, you love yourself and you do that inner work and you raise your vibration, your physical body is not completely in, indica indicative of your vibrational level. That's within yourself and your heart. And yes, while we're working to change within, to have an external reality of what we call perfection, the thing is, is we're perfect just like we are because we're doing the best we can. And until we have more tools to work with, this is what we need to love. We need to love our physical body for giving us this uh, vehicle to do this work in. And I do that. And so I'm very comfortable with that. I'm also very lucky to have a partner who does not ever, ever put any pressure on me to lose weight. And um, I would I would like to look good in a bathing suit. I would like to do, you know, have more energy to do things. And I will, when the pool gets a little warmer, one of my favorite places to exercise. And I do encourage uh, everyone to to go on this journey with me to, to exercise a little bit more. I do work um, on the computer a heck of a lot. And it's no different than when I was in the corporate world and sat you know, behind a computer, um, all day long as well, and, or in the car, uh, back and forth. So <laughs> I do want to say, um, that it was, um, I guess another reason why I felt like I needed to work through this, uh, is because, uh, I, I worked very, very hard on the conference. I mostly organized everything myself and I mostly, created everything myself to go with the conference. And then I had these beautiful volunteers that helped set up many things. But by the time I got up on stage to talk about um, this one particular interview and then my, uh, my speech, I was exhausted physically. And that's when you know, you know, hey, you need to, you need to get off your ass and work out a little bit more. <laughs> I can do that. That's no big deal. But um, I gave it everything I had. And so I hope that, and that's from my heart. And it, it did, it did have a very a physical toll on me as well. Um, and being around other people was absolutely fabulous. And the energy in the place was just healing and wonderful, but it was um, physically and, uh, and uh, spiritually exhausting for me to be there for everyone and hold the space. So, um, yeah, people sometimes they don't realize um, the work that some of us do um, requires just a different vehicle, requires a different outlook, and requires a different way of looking at things. And while this may not work for you, I I just want to share my information with you and um, let you know that if you are struggling or having a problem with your weight or uh, with the way people um, think about you, I have my advice is don't give a shit about what other people say <laughs> because they don't, 
they're clearly not understanding if anyone has the gumption to say anything about the way you look. And that's about it. So I want to send my love to all of the large people, extra large people, medium people, small people, and extra small people. I love you all, and I thank you for listening to my video. Bye.